and studs. All right, Warhammer fans, let's paint a Space Marine Devastator with a missile launcher on its back. So right now we are going to be pin washing the recesses on this particular marine and by pin washing you're not slathering the shade all over the place because by doing that you actually dull the original red color and i wanted to keep the luster of the mephiston red without dulling it at any shape point or time now we're going to then be moving on to building the lenses and the viewfinder with lead belcher which is actually my favorite silver paint and moving on, you will then paint the metals with Retributor armor. I like the gold contrast with the red, which fully goes with the whole regalness of the colors of the Blood Angels. Now next, we're going to be using Balthazar Gold to paint the Blood Angels' wings. Of course, you can find other replacements for this particular color. Standard ones would probably be painting this area with black as well as probably white and then moving on we're going to be painting the armor pipes i don't know where you call this maybe bandoliers with abaddon black to give the armor a bit more character a bit more luster and a lot more definition so next thing is this is a common thing that you're going to find me doing in all my videos paint all the areas or shade the areas with lead belcher the shades go into the recesses and really fill it in to make those shadow portions i suppose stand out and the next thing we'll need to do is actually paint the lenses on the helmet as well as the blood angels drop and also the viewfinder this is so that we can use some talisar blue and blood angels contrast media to actually highlight those particular areas i really like how Underneath all that red as well as blue, you can still see that metallic, and this is one of those techniques I started using after we got the contrast paints. It's not really a technique that will win you a lot of awards, but I would have to say that it has a little bit more pop, actually a lot more pop, if you were just to paint the lenses a standard regular blue color, or the Blood Angels drop just a regular Memphis on red. Next, we are going to highlight the areas that were shaded with Agrax Earthshade with Hashnut Copper, and this is again to bring out a little bit more luster and a little bit more pop. Now we're going to be highlighting more metals with Auric Armor as well as the ribbons with the Gene Stealer Purple to give, again, more pop, more definition, because you want to see all those raised areas in a lighted tone. Now keep in mind that you can actually paint these ribbons with more of a standard color such as Warpstone Glow. I think that really looks good on a particular Blood Angels model. Now, next, you're going to be highlighting the high points on the model with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now, when you're highlighting, especially edge highlighting, I highly suggest you use the, I suppose, not really back end of the brush, but the sides of the brush so that it can pick up the crisp definitions of the edges. And there you go, and you see everything has been highlighted. Now, we're going to be highlighting the Harmer's highest points with Wild Rider Red, and again, Please keep in mind that this particular highlight is supposed to be using judiciously because it's only supposed to pick up the highest points and you want that particular areas on the highest points to be actually thinner than the other highlights that you have put on the particular model as to not actually wash out all those highlights and make everything completely well, too bright, to be honest. Now, moving forwards and onwards, we will be painting the meat and potatoes of the whole particular set, which is, well, painting the backpack as well as the missile arm that you find on the backpack with my favorite color, Lead Belcher. And then you already know that you're going to be shading with, as you saw, non oil to give some deep contrast and definition. And I think this is pretty much standard what every single painter does with Lead Belcher and non oil. These things go pretty much hand in hand. And then because those missiles and that missile arm has been dulled down with the non oil, you will need to make it pop again with Stormhose Silver. And again, be judicious with your highlights and use the side of your brush as much as you can to do those edge highlights. But hey, if you need to use the tip, you got to do what you got to do, right? But most people just like to use the full brush. Anyways, sorry, I digress. Moving on, you're going to be using the same Evil Sun Scarlet color to pick up the edges of the whole entire backpack. Again, pick up the points in which the light would hit the higher points. And now you're going to be using the Wild Rider Red to pick up where the light would hit the highest points. Again, keep in mind, this is supposed to be thinner than your other layer on the bottom. 
Now to give your model a little bit more pop and definition, you can choose to use the textured paints that you would find on the bases. And this is one of those things in which you want to try to unify your whole entire army with just one type of thing. So I decided to use Grelin Earth for my whole entire Blood Angels army. And it took me a lot of trials to figure out this is actually what the textured base that I would want. And here's a semi-pro tip for you all. So these texturized paints take a long time to dry, and obviously ain't nobody got time to wait, right? So what I end up doing is actually putting the miniature about two to three inches away from a space heater, and I put that space heater on full blast, and it dries up that base really, really good. As you can see here, we will be dry brushing the highest points on the particular base, and this is done by dipping your dry brush into the paint and repeatedly getting rid of most, if not all, the paint from the dry brush on that paper towel. Because if you don't do that, it looks like it's gonna smear all over the place and it's not gonna look good. And so that's the technique that you need to use every single time that you dry brush. Don't ask me how I know, but seriously, trust me on this one. So right now we're gonna bring out a little bit more detail on the missile launcher so, or the rocket launcher by painting the cables on the rocket launcher as well as bring out more definition on the rocket launcher. And speaking of more definition, the next thing that we'll do is actually be shading the cables. Every single time, you already know that most, if not all the time, you're going to be shading some recesses on the particular model so that Again, it can give more definition and contrast. And as you rightfully predicted, with the shades come highlights. So that's exactly how you're going to bring your model to really pop out on the tabletop. Now keep in mind, you don't have to obviously go through all the steps, but I'm sure that once you are gaming with your friends, you would want them to come up to you and say, damn, that's a really good paint job that you did. Your whole army looks awesome. And that's exactly what I'm striving to do by doing these tutorials for you guys so that you can get those mad props from your friends and to say that, you know what? I'm the best at the paints. All right, good news, folks. We are almost done with the whole entire model. There's only a few things to do, such as painting the blood drop on the pauldron, highlighting the wings on the pauldron, as well as highlighting the armor pads and the raised areas with Evil Sun Scarlet and the highest raised areas with the, you guessed it, Wild Rider Red. And every single time that you paint a Blood Angels Marine, you will be using Memphiston Red, then Evil Sun Scarlet, and then finally, Wild Rider Red. Now, I will be upfront and very forthcoming with you guys. This part of the painting tutorial unfortunately goes a bit downhill. I was trying to do something different with regards to painting the missiles and especially the smoke that trails out of the missile when it gets fired and it just did not look right or work out very well. I was trying to do something different, like I said, to challenge myself to get something done and it just, again, did not turn out quite right. So the whole premise is if you look at a missile being fired out of the launcher, the hottest colors are actually from the exhaust of the missile, and if you look out, the smoke just billows out from there, and that smoke is a gray color. So I tried to capture that a little bit on this particular model, but it just did not work out. So probably the easiest thing to do is maybe to not even include that missile as I did on a few of my other models. So there you have it, Warhammer folks. You have another Devastator Marine that was just completed. If you want to see my other tutorials, especially with the Space Marine Sergeant in the middle, you can find that link in the upper right-hand corner in the eye. So this is Bruce and Studs. I hope you enjoy this particular tutorial. There will be more to come. And as usual, I will see you all in the next build.